Hello, tea friends. This is Barb Gully of Barb's Tea Service, and we are back for our Barb's Tea Service podcast, courtesy on TV Studios. Mm-hmm. And I am here with studio engineer Arm Hand Arm Candy and Candy. <laughs> you are Candy. I guess it's been a while, so we're we're tanned uh, and rested and can't talk. <laughs> yes, co-host Chris Gully. Hi, Chris. Hey, hey. So. Uh, it's been a while uh-huh. since we've been in the studio. We took a, a two-week hiatus. Yes. And and we've forgotten everything we know about podcasting. <laughs> we have. It's a whole new learning curve. So yeah. this is our 15th podcast. Amazing. It is. Wow. It's that. Yeah. Well, I, it's kind of that, that, that awkward time in a, in a podcast life. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know. Should your podcast start dating? Should wear makeup? What about the podcaster learner's permit? You know, that we need to start thinking about. Exactly. It's uh, it can be tumultuous. Yes, yes. So we're we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do a test drive. Yes. <laughs> and hopefully we will pass. All right. Very good. So today, as always, we've got a lot to pack in because mm-hmm. as I mentioned, we were on the road for almost two weeks. Yes. And we went to Canada. Mm-hmm. We went to Kingston and to Montreal. We did. We did. We had a family reunion. We mm-hmm. did some family ancestry research, mm-hmm. and then we we also experienced poutine and another presidential home, which I think is going to put us at like ten. Yes, nine or ten. Yeah. Because when we went to Canada, once we went up to Montreal, mm-hmm. we came back through Vermont mm-hmm. and New York. Mm-hmm. And we stopped at a super charming city in the Hudson Valley. Yes. With Gilded Age connections. Yes. Uh huh. And as you mentioned, this is a tea zur mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that we're going to have a special guest. Yes. Who we met in Troy. Right. Has connections to the HBO series Gilded Age. She's kind of the historical consultant. Yes. And uh, she kind of. Uh, Kind of corrects um, the the the, uh, the crew there for uh, uh, anachronisms and things that really don't didn't happen at the time that or should have or should have, have been there. So she's a, yeah. a person for detail, and yes. she is excited about her podcast yes. and wants to be a guest. Yeah. So that's coming up, and she she is actually a real treat. I oh, mean. right, <laughs> yeah, super interesting. Yeah. Okay, so. Today, I thought what we'd do is, because we had been all over the map, uh-huh. literally, mm-hmm. from Kingston to Hudson Valley, mm-hmm. I thought we'd kind of jump right into the middle of our trip and talk right. about yes. Montreal. Yes. So, we'll talk about Montreal, Poutine, mm-hmm. Marc Beauchemin, uh-huh. crazy restaurant at yes. the end of the good road, Yes. and Petit Peu of family history. Right. Old Montreal, and then some of these historic venues in Montreal that have hosted international events. Yes. So that's a lot. All right. Let's get to it. Mais d'abord, le thé. (laughs) Okay. On our last podcast, we were speaking about France, Versailles, Louis XIV, 15th, and 16th. And Uh so we had a French tea. Uh Uh-huh. And we talked a little bit of Parlez-vous Francais. We did a little bit of that. Yes. And it applies to our theme here, too, because Montreal is part of French Canada. It is. And so I selected a tea Mm -hmm. that pays homage to Canada Uh as a whole. Right. And it's a maple tea. Uh Uh-huh. And it is from... Sri Lanka. Uh-huh. I actually purchased this, and I'm going to show this to the camera for those who are watching. Mm-hmm. I purchased this in a Vermont gift shop. Mm-hmm. This was the home of Calvin, Calvin Coolidge. Right. So a little teaser there, too, right, about right. an upcoming topic. But it was in the gift shop. And because it was far enough north, this is still yeah. bilingual. Yes. So it's in French yes. and English, uh-huh. and it is maple tea uh-huh. and or te garabla. Garabla. Yes. So, shall we take a little taste of yes, this? I'm excited. Mm. 
What do you think of this? This is a black tea so, with maple flavors. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely it's uh, got the maple um, infusion. A um, little bit of an af- a, lot, a lot of aftertaste mm-hmm. here on this one. Mm-hmm. So, uh, eh, you know. They can't all be winners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to be diplomatic, but. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this tea comes from a company in Sri Lanka, uh-huh. and Sri Lanka is known for its tea Ceylon tea right. because Sri Lanka was formerly known as the Ceylon. Ceylon, right? Okay. And it has a, an amazing climate. Right. A lot of different. I think they call it terroir. Yes. Okay. So different. Uh, soils and elevations and it really contributes to a variety of mm-hmm. tea and their, their black teas are known to be robust right. and bold mm-hmm. and and also have citrusy notes yep. but i think this is probably overpowered by yep. the maple yeah but anyway uh <laughs> so <laughs> we might moving on <laughs> well here's another interesting thing yeah it has an expiration date yes on it. we were just talking about that right one of the podcasts that we we had we talked about the different shelf life of tea Mm -hmm. this one actually has it printed on it right and it is uh, for this will expire in 2027 Mm -hmm. and so it's really pushing the envelope of black teas we talked about usually it's two years Mm -hmm. you can go up to 36 months but i have a feeling that we won't have to worry about an expiration uh probably not (laughs) this might not make the tea (laughs) closet right okay so let's talk about montreal yes so first a few facts Mm -hmm. montreal is the largest city in quebec Mm -hmm. second largest in canada right and it started in 1642 Mm -hmm. it was known as the v marie Mm -hmm. city of mary Uh later turned to mount royal Uh or montreal and it's on an island too yes it is that was interesting we kind of experienced that (laughs) right Uh so The census as of 2021 Mm -hmm. had the population of Montreal at about 1.7 million. Mm -hmm. But the whole area is, the whole metropolitan area is about 4 million. So it is the second largest metropolitan area in Canada. Mm -hmm. And of course, the primary language, the official language is French. Mm -hmm. And they are, they were surpassed in the 1970s in in economic growth right. and population by Toronto. Right. But it's still very much a vibrant city. Yes. It uh, has a lot of culture. It does. There's art, mm-hmm. great food. Yes. And Which we did our best to uh, experience. <laughs> we did. We did. So there's still a lot going on. Mm-hmm. And also, as I mentioned, it has a couple of interesting venues that hosted international events they did and we saw them on our on our tour we took a right. tour of montreal mm-hmm. and it is the it was the first city in canada to host an olympics mm-hmm. the only city to host the summer olympics ah. you know what year that was uh in the 70s sometime right? it was okay. 76 ah, okay 76 i was still in high school <laughs> <laughs> okay and we saw that Olympic Stadium. Right. You can't miss it. It's very distinctive. It's got that tower. The leading, the leaning tower. Yes. Which, uh, according to the tour guide, actually was not completed in time for the Olympics. Which you know, I don't know, was pro- should uh, should have been a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, they, but, but they, it's very distinctive. They persevered. Yeah. And then they also hosted. And I'm going to read off the official name. The International and Universal Exposition, Uh otherwise known as Expo 67. Expo 67, right. And uh, Chris, you and I are going to go, we're going to join Mr. Peabody and Sherman in the way back machine. Uh We're going to go all the way back to 1967 Uh because we were both at Expo 67, part of our family's vacation. Yeah, uh uh-huh. Of course, we didn't know each other. Right, right. right. Um, but this was, our, and we both have a, a lot of family in right. Canada. Right, So right. this was kind of a yeah. natural progression of vacations. Yeah. So we went to Expo 67. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting, 
So we went to a restaurant that was recommended by our tour guide, mm-hmm. Auberge Vieuxport. Right. Which means? Uh, well, port is port. Yep. <laughs> old port. Old port. Okay. Just because it's in, it's in old Montreal. Right. But it was, he said it was the second best rooftop restaurant yes. in Montreal. And, best view. And we kept waiting for the other shoe to yeah. drop. He wouldn't disclose the first one. Yeah. <laughs> so either it's rather yeah, mysterious yeah. or he yeah. just didn't want to share that. Yeah. Anyway, from that rooftop, we could see what's left of Expo 67. Yes. And one of them is the U.S. Pavilion. Yes. The, with, big, the big globey thing. Right. <laughs> the kind of that wire mesh yeah. globe. Yeah. And now it's an agricultural museum and you uh-huh. can go and visit. Mm-hmm. Another part of Expo 67 that's still there uh-huh. is the habitat. Right. L'habitat. 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 Yeah. And do you remember what was so significant about l'habitat? Uh, well, I mean, in physical, I mean, it's just this boxy kind of thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Apartments. And uh, wasn't it supposed to be like for affordable housing at yes. the time? Yes. Uh, like it was a grand experiment in that. Exactly. Yeah. So it was to... Uh, it was a revolutionary idea yeah. for low-income housing. Right. Ironically, today, oh, yeah. it's, it's very expensive. <laughs> it's a condominium community, right. Right. and it's they're they're very yeah. expensive. Yeah. But you can do tours there. All right. So, might be something for us to do mm-hmm. in twenty twenty-seven. Yes. Wouldn't that be fun to it would be take fun. that tour? Yeah. Okay. Just as our tea is expiring. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Long gone. Yeah. Long gone. Okay. Okay. So, do you remember anything about the Expo 67? Oh, that was a minute ago. <laughs> it was. Uh, I, you know, I, I think I, you know, have just general and not very interesting recollections of that, uh, but for what it's worth. Yeah, because, I mean, we were very young. Yes, yes. And some of the things that stand out to me, a few memories, and I, this was aided by my brothers mm-hmm. uh, because I went with my right. Three older brothers, my parents, my aunt and uncle, and right. my cousin, mm-hmm. who was my age. Right. So we, my aunt had had discouraged us from going to the U.S. Pavilion uh-huh. because she said it was just yeah. U.S. You know, crass, crass. Yeah. Movie stars right. and right, big pictures of yeah. movie stars. Yeah. And who and wants to see that? Who, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> uh, and I also it probably had a very long line. Yes. But the other thing I remember, as someone who's very young would remember, not all the great pavilions and the shows right. and uh-huh. the theater, but I remember there was this restaurant, this uh-huh. cafeteria. Yes. And it was kind of this approach, nouveau approach for, for us yeah. that you could eat. You could, you could um, put everything that you wanted on your plate. Right. It was one price, fixed right. price. Uh-huh. So you could load up your plate. You could. And they had all kinds of great yes. things. Yes. And my cousin loaded up. His parents <laughs> weren't really paying attention. They lo- he loaded up on beans and French fries. <laughs> so he gets to the end of the line, and they're <laughs> kind of mad at him. But yes. that was a standout <laughs> of the trip. And also the fact that, hey, Brian might, might have been onto something. That's right. Kind of sounds a little bit like poutine. Uh, all right. Okay. Wow. So anyway, one thing I want to... I talk about though before we get to poutine mm-hmm. is a restaurant that we we visited in old montreal right mm-hmm. did you love old montreal we yes uh very charming and uh, uh it was very well done and uh you know it's very walkable and uh it, w- it was great fun right lots of art galleries mm-hmm. and these w- restaurants so we stopped our first night there we stopped at a restaurant right. that had served tapas right mm-hmm. um, Small plates, right. petite plates, uh-huh. and the server saw the shirt that you were wearing. So I was wearing a kind of a Hawaiian style uh, shirt, but it was uh, so when you're when you're um, going on an extended you know two week road trip, you empty your closet out of you know because it's got to last you the whole time. So one of one of my selections was a Detroit Lions um, Hawaiian shirt, which I wore that evening mm-hmm. to to this tapas place. And uh, go ahead. <laughs> well, he said, you're from Detroit. Yes. And I said, how did you know? And yes. <laughs> he said, well, the shirt. Yeah. He recognized the, the, the lion's, lion's yeah. emblem because it's a little subtle. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. 
and he told us that he was in a fantasy football. Yes, yes. So, yeah, we're in Montreal, you know, and <laughs> he's telling us about his fantasy football league, and he knows all about the Lions, and uh, that's where you go, you know, the NFL is <laughs> – pretty good <laughs> far reaching <laughs> yeah. far reaching yeah. uh yes because uh i yeah. think my brother said that he doesn't know any of the <laughs> anybody on the uh, montreal alouettes and the cfl <laughs> right <laughs> so that was kind of fun and it yeah. was encouraging because yeah. we could really be proud of the lions we yeah. always are but you know especially this right, year right. okay so another thing i wanted to mention too was the fact that well, let's talk about poutine. We right. had a search for poutine. Uh huh. We did. And it's not really that hard to find. I mean, they have it in, mm-hmm. in the fast food <laughs> restaurants. Yes, we were introduced to a chain called uh, Saint Hubert. Yes. And they serve chicken. Chicken. Yeah. And poutine. Our kids got it at McDonald's. Yeah. But when we were in Montreal, I really wanted to get some authentic yes. poutine. Yes. Yes. So. When, it was a little bit of, of a misfire. It was a big misfire. <laughs> but this is where I say smartphones probably earn yep. their yep. title as right. a smartphone. Uh-huh. Because I typed in poutine nearby. Uh-huh. And it, so it yep. came up with this restaurant. It was a 10-minute walk from yeah. our hotel. Uh-huh. We walked there, and guess what? Yeah, what are you talking about? This doesn't look <laughs> like a poutine vibe. No. It's almost like a fern bar. Uh-huh. <laughs> and... And when they served <gasps> healthy food. They served healthy food. I said to our hostess, do you serve poutine? And she just laughed. She said, no. <laughs> yeah. So we were we were really hungry, and we are like, yeah. okay, I guess yeah. we're going to be forced to eat some healthy food. Probably a good idea. Yep. We had the best salads yes. ever. Yes. Wonderful yogurt yeah. dressing. Yeah. But you ordered kombucha. Uh, f- yes. as my drink. Yes. Yes. And so they sell this. It's a, a Canadian brand, Club, uh-huh. Club Kombucha. Uh-huh. And we're going to do a whole podcast. It was very good. Kombucha. Yeah. It's a fermented tea. It is. And it's this is kind of a fizzy one. We yeah. had a. Yeah. Very refreshing. It was a hot day and, and I enjoyed it very much. Right. Right. So we'll, we'll, we, so we did get a little bit of tea time. Right. Right. In Montreal. And that's, that was it. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about poutine. Mm-hmm. So we, we did actually end up having it our last evening in, in Montreal. Right. And we found a legitimate, <laughs> had a sign up saying that we serve poutine here. The restaurant was called Montreal Poutine. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, was, it was hard to miss. We're pretty sharp. That's you know? right. Yeah. <laughs> Can't pull one over on us. Yes. Okay. Well, so, you can, but. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. get the hell of food place. Yeah. Okay. So, Chris, do you know what the three ingredients of poutine are? You're going to tell me, I think. Uh, yes, I will. Okay. Okay. So, it's French fries, cheese curds. And brown gravy. Uh huh. Okay. Uh huh. Now, we hear about poutine all the time. Yes. But in the long history of Montreal and right. Quebec, uh-huh. it's relatively new on the scene. It is, yes. Mid uh, mid twentieth century. Right. Right. Okay. In the nineteen fifties. So it was it was kind of a, a another example of kind of what working people might might eat for quick energy and and uh, as a sauce to put on their favorite foods. And, right, and right. Just, and then now it's just it's become a thing. Right. It, it did. It had humble beginnings. All right. And it was, actually, it was used a lot at some of these greasy spoons uh-huh, mm-hmm. and uh, at hockey, uh-huh. ice yeah. skating arenas. Uh-huh. And it made me think of, like, when we were younger, when we were kids and we'd go to the, the ice skating right. places near our house and yes. they would serve that awful pizza uh-huh. uh, but so this is what what, what was the, right. the nourishment their fast food at the time right and um, it had long been kind of poked fun of uh-huh. you know they yeah. they said ah, back to their cuisine yeah but it slowly started moving to Montreal right via food trucks uh-huh. and it got to this one fancy restaurant in the 1970s mm-hmm. and became kind of an elevated Yes, isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And so it was, again, it was perceived as, as a, a backwoodsy, yeah. unsophisticated. Now mm-hmm. it's haute cuisine. I know. And in the in 1983, uh-huh. we kind of did a little backtrack uh-huh. and a Burger King started selling it. Yeah. So then it once again became yep. a, um, a just a, kind of a junk food. There you go. <laughs> But they they've had a lot of different varieties. They they have a a lobster uh-huh. poutine. Yes, 
And actually, Rachel, our daughter, was telling us that in Portland, Maine, yeah. they went and had poutine, and they the French fries were fried in duck fat. Yes. And the restaurant was called Duck Fat. How about that? <laughs> okay. So now the, its origins, which who really came up with it, is kind of fuzzy because mm-hmm. a lot of people took credit for it once it became right. very popular. Uh-huh. And also the etymology is a little bit uh-huh. fuzzy because according to one of the, the Merriam-Webster mm-hmm. dictionary, they say that it, or the encyclopedia, says that it came from the French word mess mm-hmm. or the Quebecian slang right. of mess. Right. Others say it comes from the English word pudding because mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of a messy pudding. Messy pudding, <laughs> right. But anyway, that is uh, that is poutine. And how did you like your poutine? Um, it's an acquired taste. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I uh, it wouldn't be my go to. <laughs> it, it's 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 a uh, very definitely it's a, a calorie bomb. Yes. Uh, of the first order is I well you know we're having it. It's probably more of a cold weather. You're out there ice fishing or right. something like that. Right. Um, but uh, on a hot. <laughs> July day, eh, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so if we go back into you, you could wait yeah. till twenty. Absolutely. Twenty seven uh-huh. before you had your next poutine. Uh, uh yes. Okay. Um, the countdown starts now. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we're going to go from poutine to giblet. 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 So you pronounce it better than I do. Giblet. Giblet. Okay. So, real avec, quick. Avec barboot. Avec barboot. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. So. As we mentioned, part of our, our trip to Montreal was to do a little... Yeah, family history, family, family ancestry history, history. thing. Yeah. And you, you have deep uh, French-Canadian roots. I do, I do. So my, my mother's parents were from... Uh, Sorel. Sorel, which is just... Uh, uh, about, about 30, 40 minutes east north of, uh, of um, Montreal. Montreal. Right. Yeah. So in your research, you had found the church where my grandpa yeah. had been baptized. Right. And you also found traces dating, dating back to the... Original settlers right. from Normandy. Exactly, yeah, yeah. That came to... Uh, Sorel, yeah. yeah, and settled there. And they they all ride up to Paul... Pa- uh, so a gentleman named Paul... I'm not sure of the pronunciation. H-U-S was his surname. Okay. Uh, so maybe Hughes or Hughes. something like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so he... Um, uh, so a little, little uh, as an aside. So he... Um, Married woman had like eight or nine kids, um, mo- I think all of which uh, survived to adulthood, which was kind of unusual for the time. Right. They had a lot of kids, and then they had a lot of kids right. you know, through the years. So uh, one of the challenges if you're doing a genealogy thing, especially for that area, is that um, in order to kind of keep themselves straight on kind of what family line, they would kind of add a... a to their surname, uh, so D-I-T, DEET, uh, and then some other name. So it might be their occupation or what they sold or what they did or if they were loyal or, you know, right. uh, and, and that sort of thing. And then this one uh, one family um, um, had taken the name of uh, Beauchemin, which literally translates to good road. Mm-hmm. And I'll turn it back over to you uh, where we ended up with that. Okay. So, yes, this was really interesting I, for a family his, from right. our yeah. our perspective as hopefully you find it interesting too. But, yeah. right, so they, they when they would do this D-I-T, right. a.k.a. almost right. like, right. okay, so eventually the surnames would get uh, dropped. And, right, And right. You, you'd have this other yeah. this thing. So Beauchemin, Beauchemin, they had, uh, when they came in about the... In the 17th century, right, so right. right when New France was right, right. coming along, and the Beauchemin, when some of them immigrated to the U.S., they changed their name to Good Road. Right, anglicized it completely. And, and Beauchemin sounds yeah. so so pretty. Yeah, but anyway, okay. So what we what you had found in your research right. was that descendants of the Beauchemin had opened a restaurant right. in this remote area of Sorel. Uh huh. And literally at the end of the good road. It was, yes, yes. And, and and when we're kind of talking about this, I was reminded uh, one of our you know favorite authors is Douglas Adams. He wrote 
um, A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe. And the other uh, book you uh, wrote was The Restaurant at the End of the Universe. <laughs> so this is kind of like that. It's the restaurant at the end of the good road. Right, yeah. right. And and it, 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 they don't have uh, very many, uh, well, an, any other retail stores. So right, right. when we wanted to pay at the end. Yes. We, we, we discovered uh, that... Uh, our money was no good, literally. <laughs> so we, they don't take, they didn't make, take credit cards. Our, they, our debit card uh, was the wrong kind. So we had to uh, go back on the good road <laughs> to find a good ATM and then back down the good road to go pay for our meal. So we weren't, we didn't want to do a dine and dash. Right, right. So, uh, so, the, and that's just the point of Sorry. it being so remote. Yeah, yeah right, right. Good road. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But, you know, you're still kind of far from civilization. Right. But their specialty is? Jibble, which is a kind of, it's a, it's a stew. Uh, we would call it a stew. Potatoes, carrots, uh, this wonderful broth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one of those uh, things. It was just so well balanced. You, you know, you take a spoonful and you want, you immediately want to have another one and another one and another one. It's just, it was so good. And then. It's uh, prepared with uh, barboot, which is catfish. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just, you know, you have to, um, you know, kind of take the, the flesh off the backbone and kind of set the bones right. aside. It was, it was very good. Um, and uh, they would serve it with white bread. Um, and uh, I would call it Vidalia onion. They called it uh, onion espanol mm -hmm. uh, and butter. Mm -hmm. And that was your kind of your, you know, starch accompaniment to the meal. You just That was your sandwich. And... It was great. It was absolutely wonderful and, and just a completely unexpected uh, pleasure. It was, and it was, they had the, uh, the, you could also order it with, with perch. Right, yes, yeah, and, as a side of fried perch, right. yeah. And it, it, again, it, it's one of those, uh, those meals that we've talked about that yeah. came from, you yeah. know. Humble roots. Humble roots, yeah. like. And it's the, been refined and. Like haggis. Yes, the, yes. With the awful yeah. uh, ingredients. And this you could just see, okay, here's what are we having for dinner tonight? Yeah. Well, I got some potatoes and, and here we'll throw in catfish. Yeah. Here's a piece of bread, put yeah. an onion on. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and do you want some perch? We've yeah. got perch yeah. left over. So Very good. that was really uh, an interesting place. Uh -huh. And for those of you just uh, on the Bosha men, yeah. the, the family no longer owns it. Right. They sold it a few years ago right. to uh, another yeah. uh, proprietor well, but they still have the same yeah. charm yeah it's kind of community dining it, it is yeah and you can bring in your own your own wine or beer right yeah and okay so i don't know i, I how much time do we uh we're down to a couple minutes so, so we'll, might have to save we'll save some of our stuff <laughs> so yes i do want to talk about the yes. that yeah. the the church yeah. where my grandfather yeah. was baptized and the uh, yeah. records that were were found yeah. real treasure so Maybe we'll put that in mm -hmm. in in uh, uh, to kick off our next one because yep. we've got to. We'll be talking about Vermont, uh -huh. and we'll talk a little bit about Kingston uh -huh. and Troy, yeah. Hudson Valley. Yes. Uh, okay. It's all coming. And what do we hear? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the tea kettle <laughs> is saying it's time to go. We'll have to wrap up our yep. our maple tea. Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very good. And I uh, want to thank you, Chris, again, for being here. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> and also to Auntie B Studios for allowing us to be in the studio. Uh -huh. And we, we, we're we going to get caught up mm -hmm. on our reader and viewer feedback. Yes. We've, we've yep. had a lot since we've been gone. Yep. We missed it. I know. We missed everybody. So as we like to say at Barb's Tea Service, please stay tuned. Very good. We're out. <laughs>